and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing good. We are at the beautiful, serene Carnival Gardens in Naguru. And I'm really looking forward to today's conversation because this gentleman I have known for many, many years, especially when he was starting out in his career. Um, I, real names, I think, on the birth certificate are Ivan Kauma, but many of you <laughs> know him <laughs> as Cute Kaye. Hello. Hey. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How welcome, are you? welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's nice to see you. Yeah, it's nice to see and you. And it's too. nice to hear that you're doing well. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. God is good, isn't it? All the time. But the name is uh, Cute Kai still. Okay. You should have asked me to show you the birth certificate. I brought it. What do you mean? I moved with it. It's on your birth certificate? Yes, of How course. How did that happen? I was a kid. They put it there when I was a baby. So, <laughs> Ivan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So this is where we just catch up it's and a, find out what's happening in your life. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> so how are you doing? Um, I'm very well. I'm good. I'm great, actually. Mm -hmm. I should say I'm great, yeah. Okay. I am great. Okay. 2021, did yes. something change for you this year? A lot did change. 2021, I think a lot changed for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's been a year of... Um, it's been a year of... Uh, how do you say it's been a year of um not really transformation it's been a year of um mm -hmm. can you believe my english is gone so what self-awareness <laughs> or <No>. determination <laughs> huh like you've kicked in again Re <laughs> rebirth <laughs> It's been a reincarnation. <laughs> Should we get spiritual? <laughs> reincarnation. That's another good word, but no, that's not the word. When I remember the word, mm -hmm. I'll just you know mm -hmm. spring it out. But Are you it's reinventing been a year of, yourself? As yeah, well? you can. You can say you can, all not those things. Necessarily reinventing, actually. You know, that's the thing about English. It's it's um. Mm. Krista, do you um do you know Uganda? Mm, yes, to some degree, but not very well. But yeah. Uh, Sensa okwe yubula. Mm. What is that? You have any idea? Hmm. How to put it no in English? Idea. Okay. Hibernation. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, no, not hibernation. Not hibernation. Uh, uh. Oh See, my we God. are going through all the words here. We even have help transformation, <laughs> hibernation. But I think but maybe maybe it's a matter of you. Um, a, a new start, I think I'd say. Yeah, you can say that. It's you a new start that. for you. You can say that. Mm -hmm. I'll get the other word because it explains it very better. And you, you, you feel that is I the right would, one, know, right? It is the right word. It's the only way I can really tell you and you understand what I mean. Okay. Not hibernation. Hibernation, I know what hibernation is. Not hibernation. No, definitely not. Yeah. Because you're back now. <laughs> <laughs> not really hibernation. So it's been a year of, um, I guess, reinvention. Mm -hmm. But still, that's not the word. Mm. But you can say uh, reinvention. I've been, um, I've had a chance to, to, to get better, to understand myself a little more, mm. and then um, to see life for what it is: growth, improvement. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So while everybody else has been going through COVID-19, because actually uh, before the year 2011, I was in rehab. Mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. So yes. Um, you can imagine in rehab, I was practically <coughs> working on myself. Yes. Simply. Yeah. How long were you in rehab? I was there for nine months. Nine months? You know. Yeah. Okay. Nine That's months. 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you said before 2011. Oh, no, 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 before uh, 2021, Jesus Oh, Christ. so last year. That's 11 years. Last year you were in yes. rehab. Okay, yes. yes. So I can imagine mm -hmm. that you've come out with a completely different outlook yeah, on life. Huh? you know. Okay. I, um, I realize there is some guy, one of the books I, I read, I read, I read, I love to read, of course. I read a lot. Mm -hmm. I used to read a lot. I still read a lot, but I read a lot more now, mm -hmm. the Bible, and then some books. Now, there is a book by um, Robert Schuller. Okay. It's called uh, Tough Times Never Last, But Tough People Do. Mm -hmm. Now, in that book, he said something that resonated with me then. He said that um, a setback is a setup for a comeback. So... I kept thinking about that first, and then I said, wow, okay, it's set up for a comeback. 
set up for come back set up for come back set back mm -hmm. set up for come back so i kept thinking about it and then it made sense mm -hmm. yes okay so i i started working on that all right not necessarily by the way that's something that i i um i would like someone to understand not in a way that um i'm coming back to be a cute kai who was sometime mm -hmm. because to me that's not possible anymore yeah actually um before when i um when i relapsed because i did yes. once mm -hmm. now when i did everybody who was around me after rehab they were telling me now we need to do this you must come back you must do this begin there you show that one you show the other one and then um i think that's how i did relapse because i was trying to be who i was mm. but that was gone mm -hmm. so you find that um i found that when you try to be who you were you're definitely going to get frustrated because it's not possible mm -hmm. and that time is past yes yes that time so, is past so yes so this time around um it was more about rediscovering what i can be what i can do what can i put on the table mm -hmm. yes okay <laughs> okay. Yes. I like what you said that you know people are saying show this person and show that yes. person and at the end of the day the only person you need to show is yourself. It's not about you need to else. do the work for you, right? And that's exactly. the thing about life. Yes. When we all begin to understand that whatever we're doing we have to do it first for ourselves, then we find our way. Right? There's some guy still I think in the very same book he says that a better you is best for all those around you. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of the day, you know, that's the thing about life that I did learn. It's about you. Mm -hmm. If you can work on you, actually the other things start happening. <laughs> it's like magic. Yes, they start falling into place. <laughs> they fall into place. It's oh, amazing. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, l let's go back. Let's go back to even before, you know, you got into music. Yes. When were you born? Didn't I hide my age or something like uh, that? No, I didn't say when. Uh, I didn't say when. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> I said where. Where were you? Where, born? where? I was born in Lugazi. In Lugazi. Lugazi. Okay. Yes. Your parents were working there. Mm, yes. My mm -hmm. father, my father, he um, he was, he still is a salesman. Okay. Um, I remember he first uh, used to sell clothes. Mm-hmm. Secondhand clothes. I think that's when we were young, when he came from the village and met my mom. Mm -hmm. So she, he was selling clothes, and I think that was so nice for him. And then later he progressed. He started selling uh, shug. Um, I don't even know what it, that, that that is called. You know, um, molasses. 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 Yes. yes that's yes, what yes. it's called. Yes. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, since I was a kid, after he stopped selling it, I never bothered to like find out anything about it or anything, it stayed there. <laughs> and right now, here I am wondering, is, was that a Luganda word? <laughs> English word, what word was that? Uh -huh. So what, what is that? It English? is an English word, <laughs> okay, molasses. It is it like the raw sugar yes, before? Yes, when it stayed. Because the white sugar we end up with yes. is refined so many yes. times, but yes. So he started selling that. Okay. He progressed into that. And um, after that, he progressed into produce, uh -huh. you know, foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, we grew up. They give. Uh, we were born there, mm -hmm. and um, I started my schooling, nursery, um, primary, up to P3 mm -hmm. there as well in, in Lugazi. Lugazi. Okay. Yes. You and said we. That's you and your siblings. And my, yeah. My, okay. My, my other siblings. I think we. Maybe my last born brother. Mm -hmm. Only he didn't. But otherwise, all of us, we studied. We started in Lugazi. Okay. The school, it was called uh, Lugazi Community. Okay. We all went through that school. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was one of the directors. Ah. It was a very good school. I think it was a very good school. And it, it had a, a Christian um, foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it was a very good school. Okay. Yeah. Then after that, you said to P3. We moved, yes. Then we moved to Mukono. To Mukono, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My father moved uh -huh. his business to Mukono. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he felt, I don't know if he felt he needed to move maybe to improve or something. I don't mm -hmm. know, move closer. But I think it was actually very good. Mm -hmm. You know, my father, he just kept 
he kept moving forward. forward. Yes, he kept, you know, going some further, some further. And um, I think even us as siblings in our clan, I guess, it helped us because we were the first ones to come to Kampala practically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we moved to Mukono and then I joined another primary school in Mukono. Okay. Yeah. And you were there until P7? Yes. How did you know? Mm, I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking. And yeah. then from there? From there, um, my uncles were already in Kampala. So I was very stubborn. Ah, extremely stubborn. Oh. oh my God, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> that bad. Yeah, so um, I moved with my uncle, one of my uncles. I stayed at his place and I started my, and that's when actually I'd started my S1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I moved in with him. I stayed at his home for like a few months. And then I moved back to Mukono. Okay. <laughs> so you moved your uncle because of issues that you were having? Not issues, not necessarily issues. I wanted to go to Kampala, <laughs> most certainly. <laughs> okay. Yes, I wanted to go to Kampala. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I moved in. Actually, by then, already there is, there is, uh, I probably, I don't know, I probably am skipping a lot of things, but then I already was singing. You know, mm. singing some um, uh, ka karaoke. Okay. Karaoke. Mm -hmm. I would mime songs. I was very passionate, so I, I, I would mime songs. Boys to Men, R. Kelly, Luther Van Rose, mm -hmm. you know, those people who were singing then. So I would sing in different places. Uh -huh. In Mukono first. Mm -hmm. And then at uh, schools, I remember, we would, I would always know, I had a, a few other guys who were interested, I would always know which school has a kadanke. <laughs> okay. So I go and sing. So you could go you know? and sing, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I come and sing. Sometimes it would be two schools or three schools. I come reach here. Yo, what's up, what's up? Can I sing a song? I hear sing a song. Can I mime a song? Mm -hmm. And then I mime a song. And then go to another school, mime a song, and mime a song, and then go back and chill. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so when was the first time like you realized you had that gift? Like, because you have a beautiful voice. Wow, thank you very much. So when is the first time you were like, okay, I'm not just singing like everybody else who mm. sings? Actually, can, it's so funny. I think, um, I think even, of course, anyway, um, I was in a P5 the first time I, I performed for, for people, for an audience of a lot of people in the school where I was, St. Chizito. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a speech day. So on those days we present. And our school teacher then, I remember his name, I can't forget his name, can you believe? Uncle Jimmy. Actually, they told me our headmaster died. Uncle Lawrence, I died sometime. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me just recently. Yeah. May he so rest in peace. Now, Uncle Jimmy, I, um, he, told, he gave me a CD with Lucky Dubé's music. He told me, can you, because I used to sing, 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 so he, you know, he, he was like, this one, this one, you can, can you sing that song? Mm -hmm. I said, why not? He gave me the, the tape. Cassette, uh, yes. CD, I hear. <laughs> cassette. cassette tape back then. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I took it home. I started listening to Lucky Dube, Remember Me. Yes. And uh, on the day I performed that song, you know what happened? Because the parents were very either excited or happy, I do not know, you know, Perry, how we feel, because now I'm a parent, mm -hmm. how we feel when we see our children, you know, doing something, you feel like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> like, that's my child, that's <laughs> <laughs> He belongs to me, so, they gave me a lot of money, someone had to bring a basket. Hey. Yes. Okay. Imagine even back then, so, they put money in the basket, I was singing while I'm looking in the basket, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> my basket. <laughs> But after, the, after singing, I think I was excited too. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what happened to that basket. Mm. I don't know. So now when you're saying that you kind of knew where every kadanke was, yes. were you skipping school sometimes to yeah. be able yeah. to? Yeah, true, true. I was, ah, okay. I was sometimes. Mm -hmm. I was, but um, I think that's, that's really wrong though. Mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope children can understand. Actually, um, 
there is something I'm writing, probably, probably at some point, maybe it can become a book. Mm -hmm. But I've been writing some experiences, and guess what? Honestly, I put some of these things. It's a very beautiful feeling. <laughs> It's a very, very beautiful feeling. So I, I, I think it's, yeah. So you got your first taste of money with that basket. When yeah. you sang like a dube and you could see people filling it up. Yeah. Is that the point when you're like, ha, huh, I can do this. I can make some money from this. Actually, <clears throat> in my life, I've never felt like I can do this. I, never, I have never looked at music that way. I've never perceived it that way. Right, okay. I've always just done it. Mm -hmm. I think I probably just loved it so much since since forever. So it's always just been part of me. Okay. It is something that I just do. I don't think about it or anything. No, I just you know it's something I just do. Mm -hmm. I just do it. So who was like? When did you start getting paid like for for gigs? Do you remember? Um, I, uh, um, when I won Mr. Sabrina's, I think that's 2005. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they paid me 500,000 and a record deal with Bravo Studios. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I, um, I competed for Spear, um, Spear, Spear Motors, mm -hmm. I, it was that competition, I don't remember how it was called. But somebody else won though, I came in second, mm -hmm. but still they paid me money. Mm, you got some money for yes, that. Yes, I got some money. And uh, of course even before there were some karaoke places, we started getting paid with the guys I was with. Mm -hmm. They would call us at, at um, the deep in, in Tinder. Mm, I remember the deep, yes. yes. Um, there was... Sachs Hotel, one was in Kampala. Actually, I think um, there where there is a Nakasero market. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. There was Sachs Hotel there. Mm -hmm. In that place, it would work up to morning. I remember because I used to stay in Mukono, there was no taxis going back to Mukono at night. And yet, the karaoke would never go up to morning. So where would you be? Would, that's the thing. We would we knew now these places. There was sacks. It would go till morning because there were ah. some guys who worked at night. Ah, so you could stay there we until just, morning. After we come mm -hmm. and sit and wait up to about six thirty when the taxis begin to move, we go back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I was getting paid little pay, you know, petty money. And this I guess, was while you were still in school. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How were you and your old man at that point? Uh, my father. Well, he, um, he, 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 he never believed I should sing at all. Nobody in my family believes those I should sing. Mm -hmm. You know, my family, they are, we are uh, born again. We have a born again um, foundation, I guess. My grandfather is a pastor. Mm -hmm. And um, all my uncles, his children are pastors with churches. So okay. while I was doing this, I grew up in church. I would sing in church mm -hmm. and then at night escape and do that. I remember one time, my uncle, that guy, <clears throat> we are sitting at the dining table. We are going to have breakfast. He comes as a pastor. He comes in, sits down at the table. Praise God, praise God. Good morning, good morning to you. You're fine? I'm fine, thank you. He says, okay. I keep quiet. Are you fine? Why are you keeping quiet today? <laughs> I'm like, nothing, I, you know, I, I don't have anything to say. We're going to have breakfast. He's like, <laughs> you think I don't know? You don't know what? You think it's only yesterday? Every day at night, every Saturday, every Friday, every Thursday, some Wednesdays, when I hear the dog barking once and then something falls, I know you're back. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, that's how I know you bark. The dog barks once and I, <laughs> I hear something falling in. I know you bark. Because like, we always oh. think they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh my God. <laughs> so this whole time he knew. <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> what, what have I been doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, 
it's something I've, uh, I've, I've always just done. I have loved it so much. I think I love, if you took music away from me, that's what would kill me. Mm. Yeah. But it must have been tough not having support from your family. You know, I don't know. By the way, that's how I grew up and it's so bad. I learned, I think through my, uh, my experiences, I learned to just stand alone somehow keep looking and then go keep going okay. so i never really actually like held it against them okay you accepted that that's who they are yeah and and you'd have to do it on your yeah, own yeah and it doesn't matter no because i'd never seen anybody you know i think everybody i'd never seen anybody live life so it was all this adventure it's something go it's going on it's just going on mm. i couldn't complain about something because i don't know if that was supposed to be or that was maybe my mom was supposed to do this for me my father no 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 i knew my mom is around yeah she's fine she, that woman she loves me very, and she loves me so much mm -hmm. believe me mm -hmm. i love her so much to god bless her okay so who was supporting well, you in this time because still I, I i i i should that's the funny one i should say my family because who else they were not they were not doing anything for me nor were they doing anything against me you shouldn't do those things but he loves them very much so what do we do we look at him but they would say do one thing you better stay in school okay you better stay in school My so that was the agreement down. you have to stay in school do whatever you want to do get crazy stay in school okay you cannot leave school that's not an option. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, find time for school, do your other things. It's allowed. So, and uh, my mom, of course, I would ask her for some transport sometimes and she would just give it to me. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want what I'm going to do. She doesn't <laughs> even want to hear explaining it to her. I'm going to do this and then she'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> and look the other way. Okay, you go. <laughs> it's your problem. Go. After all, you want to go. Mm. Yeah, so eventually I think I, um, as well, I kept, um, I kept, um, um, what's the right word? I kept, um, I kept, um, what, performing? making, no, 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 meeting. Um, I kept creating my own family of friends mm. around. Okay. The people I would meet, I started, you know, getting out a few people becoming my really close friends, mm -hmm. really close. And so, you know. We started talking. I remember a friend came and he said, you know what? I said, no, I don't. There is um, a bazaar in Makere, okay. You know, Rose Bazaar's Lumbox, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mishleks. Mm -hmm. He says, I know some cousin of mine, he's at campus. He's on the board who organizes it. He can get us to perform there as well. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Are you serious? We can perform in Makere? Yeah, we can. What are we going to put on? <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's go and kill it. Oh my God. And then we started going for those as well. And those people would facilitate us, by the way, with maybe a hundred thousand or so. Which back then was, was good money. Was, was fine money. It was <laughs> really fine money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So you started doing those gigs. Because I was asking well. you, when did you really start making money? Yeah. But you know, I cannot really say that was making money. No, I mean, that was just at least you know? keeping you going, yeah. keeping you going. Yeah, but sometimes we wouldn't even have transport, we would just walk. You know, I would walk from um, Boyogere to Ntinda. I would just start walking early. Other times I would walk. I, I can imagine the people who are going to see me and they remember me in those days, like, he had walked that time. <laughs> <laughs> I would walk to Garden City, mm -hmm. alligators to perform. Mm -hmm. And when I get there, I go straight to the toilet first, clean myself up. Freshen up a bit. <laughs> show up give me a mic i sing dance with my father mm -hmm. spin me around till i fell asleep mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so um they would facilitate it sometimes other times they wouldn't but it wouldn't matter that's never what it was about the point was it you never just was it was to, to sing. sing yes i wanted to sing at some point i became an mc i started emceeing friends as fast as i started with family and friends um um, parties, mm -hmm. birthday party, graduation party, they have a wedding, I would come and MC okay. so that I can be able to sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I MC three, four times, I introduce this, I talk about this, I read some jokes, people laugh, we laugh, and then I say, 
DJ. I play my song, I begin singing. I'm like, hey. I think the moment I would finish singing, eh, I would forget I'm the MC and leave. <laughs> oh no. You're like, my papa's here. Like, it's done. It's done. <laughs> Where's the MC? So now who's going to speak? Call him back and there were no phones. <laughs> when someone goes, you have to look for them. Yeah. And you had done your part at that point. You know. So no, they would tell I'm, me, you know, you're not singing, you will sing. Later, so At much the later. End, <laughs> First, they figured you, know, you out. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you yeah. did like a few competitions, but yeah. one of you, the biggest ones, I think that people really got um, to know you. I was with a uh, project fam. Mm -hmm. I don't remember there, but all those things should have been around two thousand and four, five, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, from about 2003, Three. wasn't it? Oh, yes, around, around there. there. I went for Coca-Cola Pop Stars, mm -hmm. uh, Project Femme Pop Stars. Yeah, I think that's it, mm -hmm. those two. So at that point, you said, you know, you kind of started getting your friends and they yeah. were becoming your family. Yes. Who was managing you? Nobody. You were managing yourself? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. looking back now. Mm. Do you see that, <laughs> that that might have been an issue as well? It was, of course. It was a big mm. one. Mm -hmm. A big one. It was a big one. But you know, that's the challenge that I have now about my life. When I look back at all those things, if I had management in the beginning, I probably wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have been here today. Okay. I wouldn't know what I know. I wouldn't have gone through what I went through. I wouldn't have gone through addiction. Mm. I wouldn't have messed other things up because I could sing. Even back then, I could sing so much. Mm -hmm. So if I had management who are managing the product and they're professional, they studied this, they know what to do, we would be places. But then the challenge is <clears throat> I would never have found me. I would never have found the purpose. Or maybe you never know, maybe I would have found it somewhere. I don't know though. But mm -hmm. now I can speak for what I know. Okay. Yes, going through everything that I did go through up to today, I think I found the purpose. And I feel like life is ripe. Honestly, that's how I feel. I mm -hmm. feel like, I feel life is so ripe. Actually, a lot of times when I sit, I look up like this, and then I can see that everything is right there. Because I do not know, I, I, I know for a fact I cannot take this back. I think I'm going to be one, if not the first, by the way, the first biggest star from Uganda in Africa or the world. Because that's my intention. I remember that was always your dream. Yes, though. now it gets better. Mm -hmm. Because then I didn't do it, I think simply because I had no purpose. I had not defined the purpose for myself. It was just that, just that. And then everybody else who would come on board, they also were just looking at that. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So one of us had to, to bring the purpose. And I think that's supposed to be me. That's supposed to be me. So now that it's here, it makes life interesting. Mm -hmm. Because there is some more to look to look for in life rather than just seeing or just making the money which of course i should make i must make like mm -hmm. other people do but there is more now mm -hmm. yeah there is even something that i would like to use that money for if so i can more have that more is driving you now yes mm -hmm. i if i have this much i should be able to do that and do that and then help that person so that this doesn't be like this and, and, and you know it's i don't know how to explain that mm -hmm. but yeah no, you've been very open about your addiction um, and <laughs> open about like just going to rehab because I know one of the biggest challenges is first understanding that you have a problem yeah. and then even when you face it head on, you kind of don't want people to know, especially as someone was a public personality. Yeah. So you, you said you just came out of rehab not last just year. A, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it I last came year? Out, I came out... Um, I think in July. In July. Yeah. Okay. Almost a year ago. Yeah. 
Was that your first time in rehab? No, I was the second time. It was <laughs> the second time? <laughs> yeah. So when was the first time? That very year, like three months back. Okay, okay. So, as in even back then, when you started having issues? Yes. You didn't seek help then? Um, actually, when I first got addicted, I didn't know that rehabs existed. But can you believe that? I didn't know rehabs existed in Uganda. You know, when I, when I first used heroin and crack, I didn't know what I was smoking, honestly. I know, isn't that insane? But it's just that um, I trusted, I, I guess I, uh, I loved the people who introduced me to that. You know, love is so messed up.